Let's do a quick test. Take a look at this image. What do you see? You probably see a few twos scattered in a bunch of fives, but perhaps you saw something like this. If you did, congratulations, you're probably a synesthete, a person with a cool but rare condition called synesthesia. In fact, only four out of every hundred people have synesthesia. So what exactly then is it? If you noticed in that test, all the twos were red and all the fives were green. This is just one kind of synesthesia. The unusual or unexpected blending of the senses, such that the stimulation of one sense triggers sensation in another sense. Synesthesia comes from the Greek words syn and aesthesis. Syn meaning together and aesthesis meaning sensation. So for example, you might smell the orange of my shirt or you might feel the green of that grass. There are at least 60 forms of synesthesia, so let's break these down. There's graphing colored synesthesia the association of colors with letters and numbers, like the test at the beginning of this video. There's also color sequence synesthesia, the association of sequences and series of information with patterns of colors. We can also have the association of sound and color. Chromesthesia is a form of synesthesia where you can literally see the color of music or sounds in the air. We can have non-color associations too, although these tend to be less common. In lexical gustatory synesthesia, Hearing certain words causes the experience of tastes. In one study, a subject described experiencing the taste of chocolate upon hearing the word phonograph. And there are even synesthetes who experience mirror touch synesthesia, a combination of vision and touch sensations. When the synesthete sees another person poked or touched in a certain way, they feel the same touch sensation as if they're looking at a mirror. We'll get into how this form of synesthesia works. But first, we need to go over some basics of how sensory information is processed in the brain. Neurons can transmit information to each other in the form of electrical pulses down their axons. The neurons in the brain are primarily arranged in neural circuits, interconnected pathways of neurons like this one shown here. And when the brain processes sensory information, neurons responsible for analysis, memory, and integration send signals to one another through these circuits to allow you to consciously perceive the sensory stimulus. So, where are we going with this? Well, neuroscientists believe that one of the primary causes of synesthesia is unusual neural connections between areas of the brain that handle two unrelated pieces of sensory information. To simplify this theory, suppose we have parts of two circuits, one responsible for processing the color red, and one responsible for processing the musical note C. In people without synesthesia, the two circuits remain separate, handling the color red and the note C separately. But what if this neuron was shifted in the synesthetes to this position? It would create a connection with both circuits. Then, if a synesthete heard the note C, the neuron would not only trigger the C circuit, but it would also stimulate the red color circuit, causing a perception of the color red when the note C is heard, which is exactly what happens in synesthetes with chromesthesia. So you might not have synesthesia. Again, 96% of you watching this video won't. But it doesn't mean your brain isn't specially wired. Normal, non-synesthetic people like you and I have unique connections, some of which can result in something called ideasthesia. Ideasthesia occurs when the activation of certain concepts in the brain evokes a sort of sensory perception. Here's what I mean. Try this test. You have two shapes shown here. One is named Booba, and the other is named Kiki. Can you figure out which is which? If you said that the left is Kiki and the right is Booba, you're like most people. Our brains associate the k sound in kiki with the cutting sound sharp objects make, leading us to then pair the sharp sound with an image that is visually sharper. Booba has a more rounded sound, so we associate it with a more bulbous shape. This form of ideasthesia indicates some programmed connection between our auditory and visual cortices that allows us to perceive sounds as having visual characteristics and even tactile characteristics, like when we say a sound is rough or fuzzy. The cortical area V4, which is crucial to visual processing, likely plays a role in this phenomenon, as well as other synesthesias involving visual stimuli. The uniqueness of brain connections and neural organization from one individual to the next explains why every person thinks differently, something fundamental to being human. I hope you learned something about synesthesia today and can come to appreciate the amazing machine inside your head. And next time you envy someone else's cognitive abilities, just remember that no one else can think and perceive the world the way you do because only you have your brain.